Welcome back to another action-packed episode of Comic Confidential. I'm your host, Cade Moyer, and alongside me today is my um, ever-trusting host, my sidekick, my Robin, my Dick Grayson. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's Troy Spinner. Yes, that's me. Uh, my dick. I thought you were going to stop at my dick. Uh, yeah. As in, yeah. Uh, hey, man, what's going on? Uh, weekend, man. It's the weekend. It's the where weekend. This is a very late recording session. It's probably one of the latest ones that we've ever done. It's at the death. It is going to be recorded. We're going to stop, edit, upload, out, done. It's The file's still going to be hot when yep. it comes into your your podcast app. Yes. So careful, it might burn you. <laughs> pia, pia. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, all right, we've got um, we got a lot to get through today, man. We've got some news stories, which is good. Uh, we have some. We got a massive review Ooh, this week. Oh boy, cannot wait! I reckon we're going to tear the internet to pieces on this one. <laughs> Maybe uh, we're going to review Thor Raggers a little bit later. A bit of Raggers. Uh, and then we've got some listener questions. We're bringing that back. Yeah, We've yeah. Been I a mean, bit lazy lately, so. Well, yeah, that's really all it is. It's so. just laziness. Look, are we filling the time because there's not much news this week? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been a pretty, um, a pretty slow news week in the old comic book entertainment movie industry world thing. Well, you know what that just means. What's that? More time for questions. More time for review. Yeah, more time for raggers. Um, and don't forget, we are in the coolest month ever. We just had Thor Ragnarok. We've just had Stranger Things. We've got Justice League, like, next week, I believe, comes out. It oh, might be the week well. after. No, it's next week. God is damn it? it. It is that close. We've got that next week. Then there's The Punisher next week. Oh, my God. Oh. I can't even keep up. Why, why am I leaving the country? I don't know. Something's wrong with me, obviously. Yeah, you're an idiot. Extradited, sure. mate. Yep. Extradited for being a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so that's um man, what a what a month, man. November is I love it. I love you, November. It's twenty seventeen. The best. It really is the best. And you know what? I'm actually having trouble finding time to fit Stranger Things in and I haven't even started it. Oh man, I'm up to the I'm up to episode seven, the much derived episode seven. For those of you who have seen it, everyone knows what I'm talking about. There is one episode in this series that have got people um, up in arms. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, it kind of deviates majorly from the story. So they spend the, the first six episodes building and building and building. Uh, and then they kind of leave you like with a big cliffhanger. And then episode seven just completely breaks away from all of that little separate side story. And then apparently comes back in at eight and nine and wraps it all up. So it's kind of like a almost like a wasted episode, right? Yeah, you reckon that's why they gave the extra episode to him this season? I, I, a hundred percent. Yeah, really. There's absolutely no reason as to why uh, this episode needs to be there. Okay. Um, Is it like a potential spinoff setup? Uh, look, I can't go into too much without spoilers. I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I genuinely. <laughs> Like, I wish I had an answer as to why they did it, but it's just one of those things where, you know, they, they made a creative decision. They said, we're going to do this. Uh, maybe they thought it would help to build the tension more. I think they did come out, the Duffer Brothers came out and actually said why, but I didn't read it. I didn't want no damn explanations. No. Nah. I just want my TV. So I've got two episodes left, basically. Awesome. You know yeah. I have nine. Can't wait to jump on board. You haven't even started. I haven't even started, Oh, mate. my God. It's just been, you know, life. Just life. We talk about this a lot. Uh, life gets in the, life, life gets in the way. Life gets in the way, life. man. Life gets in the way of this life, for sure. Nerd life, nerd life um, slash thug life. No, we Defin absolutely are not, not. thugs. Uh, more more nerd life than thug life. Should we just get into the news then? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we've officially found our Captain Marvel, the DC one, uh, as star of Chuck and the Thor franchise. Zachary Levi, Levi, Levy, Levy, Levy. It's spelled like Levi, like the jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have a tag on him, though? No, I don't think then so. Then it's not Levi. No. Um, so, Zachary Levy, then we'll call him, has been cast as the titular character in David F. Sandberg's upcoming entry into the DC Films universe, Shazam. Uh, what are your thoughts on this particular casting choice? Uh, I think he's going to do a great job, because I, I watched a little bit of Chuck back in the day. Yeah. And this guy, he's got like that, I guess, immaturity to him to make it work. Yeah. So... 
I'm excited. Yeah. A lot of people are saying he's not big enough, but I mean, no one was big enough oh, man. when they first get casted in these roles. You look at Chris Hemsworth. You yeah. look. You look at um, all of them. All of them. Literally, <laughs> literally every all one. of them. I'm like every single one of those um, male Marvel superheroes is literally coming to mind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, everybody except no. All of them. All of them. <laughs> Chris Pratt did the opposite. He was already big, yeah. but the wrong kind of big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like, it's not really a problem. Like, this guy's got plenty of time to get in shape. He even went on onto his own, um, like, personal social media and said that he was, you know, beyond grateful for the opportunity and that he's now going to live in the gym um, because he even understands that that is what it's going to take for him to get there. And I look forward to his transformation. You want to talk about transformations. You, th- you think about David Harbour from Stranger Things to Hellboy. Oh, my God. That it's was possible. like two weeks, I reckon. That guy <laughs> juiced hard. <laughs> well, he would have he would have definitely juiced hard. Uh, but like, there's a lot of hard work that's involved with that as well. So, definitely. Um, yeah, so Zachary Levy. Well, I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Someone tell me. I don't know how you're going to tell me on the internet. Send me a video on how to <laughs> pronounce it. Um, but Zachary Levy, yeah, he's... Um, I like the guy. Yeah. So he's been fandral. In Thor, in Thor Ragnarok, one of the... Um, oh, yeah, he was uh, like one of the... Um, Warriors 3. Warriors 3, yeah. which we'll talk about later on. We will. Uh, so he was one of them, had a very brief appearance in uh, Thor Ragnarok, which we'll get to. Yeah, so he was, um, you know, it, it's one of those one of those things where he's kind of like he's in the Marvel Universe, sort of. Sort of. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and he's transitioning over into the DC Universe. I think it's good, though. Yeah, I think it's good. Excellent. Uh, so the next story then would be that Justice League composer Danny Elfman has confirmed that the movie will feature his classic Batman theme and will shy away from using the score previously created by Hans Zimmer. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Me neither. Because Zimmer is pretty fucking amazing. Yeah. And I don't know if I want my old Batman theme with my new Batman. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it, it is, I love the Batman theme, man. I it, love Danny great. Elfman's Batman theme. I think it's absolutely amazing. I don't think it necessarily fits the tone of what they've created so far, though. It's kind of like putting the original X-Men cartoon theme into an X-Men movie at the start. While it might be amazing. Yeah, well, I was going to like, what is the problem here? Uh, it just won't fit. Yeah. No, you're right. Like, if you were to have the original X-Men theme... On like a Logan movie or exactly. something like that. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't work. Um, Danny Elfman is pretty good at what he does though, so I do trust him. But yeah, I like the work that um, Hans Zimmer and I think Junkie XL was involved in Batman vs Superman as well. They did a little bit of cross, crossover crossover producing or whatever it is that they do. Remixing, mate. Remixes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think um, a DJ Khaled was there as well. He was another doing thing. shouts over there. He was like... Another one. Yeah, another one. Yeah. yeah. We Batman. the best music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so he was doing that sort of stuff, which is amazing to think. I wish that actually happened. That would be great. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's that part of the news. You got nothing else to add? Mm-mm. Wowzers. We're going to fly through this news today. Lucky we got lots to talk about with Thor. Lucky we do. Now, during an interview with CNET, Avengers Infinity War directors the Russo brothers have revealed that Avengers 3 will play out like a heist movie with Thanos doing everything in his power to secure the Infinity Stones while always being a step ahead of the Avengers, they also went on to say that we can expect a lot of surprise characters to pop up, including a number we haven't even heard about yet. Who well, do you want? Who do I want? Pick them. You got the entire... Pick one. I just want someone. I want I want the Silver Surfer. I just want someone. Yeah. I we want, all want someone, champ. We all do. Um, I'm excited that we're getting a heist movie. Yeah. But... Do you think we're going to get Thanos like crawling through air vents and like leaping on the lasers? Yeah, it's definitely going to be Mission like Impossible. Ocean's Eleven. Oh, Ocean's Eleven, Mission Impossible. It's Avengers Infinity War, Impossible Mission Eleven. It's Oceans is the official wow. running title. <laughs> I think that that might be the working title. But That's the working title. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how is this going to be a heist movie? Surely he's going to have like little minions that do the, the heisting for him because the guy's like 18 foot tall. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how much he actually plays a role himself in the first part of this movie. Yeah. Like I know we see like, you know, well, we haven't seen officially 
the um, the Infinity War trailer yet, even though we have seen it in some terrible, terrible quality back in the day. Uh, so, but we have seen it. We do know that he does engage, and there is you know battles and all that sort of stuff. But um, I would be yeah. I, I think it's probably more that it, there would be minions running around and doing all the dirty work, yeah, causing problems because you're gonna have like the Guardians will be in space and Thor's in space and. There's people on Earth and people are all over the place. So, you know. I think I, I think we both know who his minion's going to be. Yeah. Which we'll, we'll talk about a bit later on. Correct. Um, but yeah, that's cool. They did say there was, what, over 60? Oh, something ridiculous. 64 or something. Yeah. Uh, characters in this movie. So, I think we're going to be getting a whole lot of um, like C-grade heroes. Yeah. Maybe some B-grade like space ones that... Uh, no one will know. Like, kind of like when the Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, everyone's like, who the fuck are these? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think it's going to be pretty much along those lines. Yeah. Uh, from from what I read as well, they kind of said that, um, you know, you'll get a lot of characters that have kind of just popped up here and there. Yeah. Uh, that are going to really be fleshed out more. So they're going to have their time to shine in this movie. Yeah, right. This movie's going to need to be five fucking hours long. You know what? For it to all work. They'll fuck with us and make it a one hour and a half movie. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> the internet will die. Um, yeah, so oh, there was only one more thing I want to say. You didn't ask me who I wanted, but it's Beta Ray Bill. So whatever. Oh. We'll move on from that. Well, he's he's kind of been... He's confirmed. Has he? Yeah. No, in the in the Marvel universe. Oh yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. He exists within it. Uh, he was actually supposed to um, turn up in Thor Ragnarok, but never did. Why didn't he? Is there a reason? Uh, uh no. They're just <laughs> being wankers. Yeah, look, I think it's just you know, it's like, what are we gonna do? Uh, we'll just we'll put his head on later. the building. Maybe they're saving it for Avengers Infinity War. You don't know. That would be amazing. All right, now thanks to the strong opening of Thor Ragnarok, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has officially crossed. The five billion dollar mark at the domestic box office, with figures via the website Box Office Mojo, the MCU is currently sitting at a whopping five billion and five million five hundred thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars, which is insane. Uh, and that's due to the to the strong Friday opening of uh, Thor Ragnarok, which was about forty six million. Oh wow! Yeah, that's 46 not bad. Six million. We'll talk about that a bit later, obviously. Man, Disney is a money-making machine, really. They are. What's your thoughts on um, on the whole Disneyfication of movies? So people are very, very quick to go, oh, now that you know Marvel is owned by Disney, then it's everything's going to be a Disney film. And Star Wars is... Yeah, everything's going to be a Disney film now. And this is a Disney film. Everything's just going to be watered down in Disney. What do you think? I, I, I climbed in that boat. Yeah, yeah, I think you they, agree? I think they are watering things down, making storylines easier. Uh, you know, so younger children can kind of enjoy these movies a little bit more. Uh, that's not to say that I'm not enjoying them any less. Yeah, um, but I think they're also making their movies a little bit more targeted towards merchandise. Yeah, I uh, think Star Wars, think Porgs. Yeah, yeah, like you've never heard of these things before, and now they kind of canon. Yeah, so. That's Disneyfied for me, mate. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I, I, I would say more definitely from a, um, from a merchandise standpoint. Yeah, I'd agree with you for sure. Um, Porgs especially, <laughs> like that is definitely something that's been created by someone. They're like, look, we need a new, cute little thing that we can make fluffy toys out of, and everybody wants. Make me a penguin-looking thing. We have hundreds of penguins without beaks <laughs> in our warehouse. Yep. What can we do with all this excess stock? Remember those three penguins from Madagascar that eventually got their own movie and we couldn't move their merchandise? We now have all of those that we need to get rid of. Make it happen. Just remove the beaks. You got a porg, mate. Exactly. Uh, was Madagascar or even Disney? Who knows? It's DreamWorks. It's I'm just Pixar. Pixar. Someone let us know. Mm. You guys out there. I'm pointing. I'm uh, you're pointing <laughs> I'm at pointing the blank to, wall. I'm pointing to the blank wall, and the guys out there. That's you. Let me know. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Now, according to a new report, Ron Howard has reshot almost all of Solo, a Star Wars story, after taking over from SAC directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller, which has caused the production budget to nearly double. Lord and Miller was sacked from the project months into production after Lucasfilm decided it did not like the improvisational way the script was being handled. So original reports were that he had kind of reshot about half and had done some extensive reshoots. Now the report's coming out basically saying... This is a Ron Howard film from start to finish, pretty much. I don't, I don't 
don't think I can believe this news. Really? I don't think there's enough time for him to do all that. Are you calling fake news? Fake news. Hashtag fake news. I don't know, man. I reckon you could do it. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, God, it'll be rushed. Yes, but like everything like... I guess if you've done it once before, you kind of know what you're doing the second time around. It's like riding a bike, man. Yeah. No, but they've kind of like the, the framework would have been laid. So, you know, when we're talking about set construction or like set design and costuming and this and that and this and that, all that's ready to go. All you've got to do is come in and you've already got a script. The actors already know the script because they've already like they've read it and then they've completely broken away and just improvised everything else. So they know everything. All you really have to do is turn up and shoot. And they've been doing these for oh, how long now? Two months, I reckon. It'd be pretty close to. That's more than enough time to get it done. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's, it's going to be very interesting, but I, I would assume that... Ron Howard will 100% get director's credit. Oh, 100% and he will. I would be interested to see if Phil Lord and Chris Miller get a mention at all. Um, maybe like a... a special oh. thanks. Yes, maybe, <laughs> maybe a special thanks. In memoriam. Like yeah. there's a little thing that pops up at the end. Um, but yeah, so it'd be interesting to see kind of like what this movie turns out to be. Because yeah, this is something that they've gone and like they were deep, deep into... Um, principal photography yeah and then ron howard stepped in and then he's kind of like done it all again so it'd be really interesting to see yeah if it is a rushed finished product but i don't care i'm still excited to see this movie like i still definitely want to see it um i just you know interesting isn't it doesn't make me any more excited for it really yeah oh man what's wrong with you woody harrelson's in it there you go you, you've hooked that me. work you hooked me <laughs> i'm in excellent now according to sources for the hollywood reporter Warner Brothers is in talks with Amazon Studios about a potential Lord of the Rings TV series. Now, the project project is still in its earliest stages with no writer attached as of yet. Uh, what are your thoughts on returning to Middle Earth? Nah. You're shaking your head. Nah. Why? No deal, mate. Why? Don't want this. Don't you? Nah. I wasn't, I'm, I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings. Oh. Not at all. It's just there goes not for me. 75% of our listeners. Fight Sorry, me. Sorry, guys. Fight me. At I Comic-Con love it. <laughs> You just love Andy Circus. I do love Andy Circus, and that's all you love. I love Andy Circus. I love um, Elijah Wood because he would. Um, I love uh, who's that guy? The See? thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you you don't love Lord of the Rings at all. You're a fake. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of their real names. You make me Legolas. Sick. His name Orlando Bloom. Real life. Thank you. That's all I needed. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look. Um, anyway. My you point can't is, even fake being excited for this. No, I am dead set excited. Look, I will admit, um, I love Lord of the Rings. The originals are great. Those those three movies are absolutely fantastic and stand as one of the best trilogies of all time, for sure. The Hobbit, on the other hand, when we did return, not so good. Um, so I was kind of left a little bit kind of, well, what's the word? Nonplussed by the whole thing yeah, once right. that was done. Because here you've given me like, nine or ten more hours of stuff that I've just sat and watched and it was really kind of just boring and meandering and didn't really do a lot for me. Imagine if you're the editor of that movie and you, your job every day is to go in and watch that boring-ass fucking trilogy day in, day out. Man, so you don't like nights and stuff. And that's kind of like, it's it's kind of medieval. You have to kind of, like, it's kind of medieval, but like fantasy medieval. Oh, it's the worst kind of medieval. Oh my God, what is wrong with you? Anyway, so I thought we would talk about a Lord of the Rings TV series happening. Uh, you obviously don't care. I think it's absolutely great. I don't know, like, if, if they could do it like a Game of Thrones-ish type of budget. Like, I know Amazon Studios is one of these, you know, these streaming services that are coming out and doing their own stuff. Uh, and they seem to find a lot of money to be able to do these things. So I don't know where they get it from. I would dare say from Amazon.com. Well, yeah, there's that. But I mean, you know, like a lot of these big companies also go heavily into debt so they can do these sorts of things. But my point is more that if you're going to do like Game of Thrones costs something insane. It's like three to six million dollars an episode, isn't Easily, it? Easily, yeah. So if you've got that type of money to make it, then yeah, if you're going to make it kind of more Xena Warrior Princess <laughs> styles, uh, then maybe just don't bother. In Norse mythology, Ragnarok is the destruction and eventual rebirth of the universe as we know it. In nerd mythology, Ragnarok is the third installment into the MCU's Thor franchise and the latest movie from acclaimed New Zealand director Taika Waititi. We went and watched it, 
and now we're going to tell you what we think about it in our super sexy. Did you hear my voice go up? That's yeah. how excited I am. Wow. <laughs> in our super sexy Thor Ragnarok review. Now, I'll kick you off with a synopsis because this guy doesn't have his notes in front of him. Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe and finds himself in a race against time to get back to Asgard to stop an event that will lead to the end of all Asgardian civilization, Ragnarok. Brought upon by the hands of an all-powerful new threat, the ruthless Hela. Now, let's talk about some money, which we can't really talk too much about because it hasn't. it's only just opened in the States, so opening weekend there isn't quite done. However, we did uh, sort of touch on it a little bit before, $46 million Friday. That's massive. That's quite good. That leads it to, um, that's that has it tracking for $120 million opening weekend. Wow. Which would make it, um, uh, so as an example, I think um, Spider-Man Homecoming was $117 million. Uh, Wonder Woman was 103. Uh, I think like 146-ish million from um, Guardians of the Galaxy. So it's going to be right up there with one of the biggest openings of the year. Damn. Top, top that, five for sure. That really is. Man, this might be the movie that saves the box office for this year. Uh, it could, uh, I don't know if it's going to like... This movie won't cross a billion dollars. No. I don't believe so. Uh, it'll, it'll end kind of... Well... I don't know. Actually, like it is, it we, is tracking for four hundred million dollars by the end of this weekend. That's an insane amount of money. Yeah. So this, <laughs> this, if Thor three crosses a billion dollars, like I will be a- absolutely blown away. And that that's no, te- that's nothing about the quality of the movie. That's more just the fact, like the the franchise was. It's the weakest dead in the water. Yeah, it's the weakest out of all the Marvel movies. Yeah. So to come back with your third movie and then go, fuck yeah, and knock it out the park, like wow. Mm. Uh, so anyway, $164 million in total uh, foreign. So that's pretty good. It's only been out for about a week and on a budget of $180 million. So there you go. This is going to be a money-making machine, mate. Well, basically, it's already made $210 million without even trying. Like, it hasn't even opened in the States yet. Insane. So, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, cast is obviously Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie, Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner and the Hulk, and Kate Blanchett as Hella, with Jeff Goldblum, Carl Urban, Idris Elba, and Anthony Hopkins, directed by Taika Waititi, written by Eric Pearson and Craig Carl, with cinematography by Javier... Aguirre Sorobe, and I'm very much pronouncing that, mispronouncing that. I reckon you nailed it. But I think he would be okay with it because he would know, having lived with that name <laughs> for like some 50, 60 years, that it's uh, it, it gets butchered all the time. Yeah. All right, so why don't you kick us off, man, with some spoiler three. Spoiler three. Three, just three Thor, spoilers. Thor three. <laughs> spoiler three. Free thoughts. Okay. Because I've got, I got some things to say. Okay. And um, I reckon we're going to make some blood boil okay. with this episode. All so right. um, the main thing that I kind of took from Thor Ragnarok is that the movie seemed it was a little bit confused about what type of movie it wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, like this movie had, it's literally about death. Yeah. Uh, but it's because it's about, it's literally about death. It's kind of jarring with how funny the movie actually is yeah um in saying that it's a hell of a ride i fucking enjoyed nearly every minute of it but um after watching it and like actually thinking about the movie like rather than just sitting there going fucking give it to me yeah went out had a little bit to think about it and i kind of got more questions than answers coming out of it really yeah so hella yeah I had really high hopes for her yeah. to be the best Marvel villain. She got the curse, mate. Uh, I feel she got the Marvel villain curse. And um, maybe maybe my standards were too high because I had this movie pipped as like movie of the year. Like this was going to be my battle up against Justice League. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought this was going to be the Dark Horse. Um but yeah, I was just really disappointed that she wasn't a good villain. Okay. So, in saying that, Hulk was great. Yeah. Just wish there was more of him. Valkyrie was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Hulk and Loki. Uh, sorry, not Hulk. Thor and Loki. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What does that even mean? People are listening. You need yeah. to like, you know. Look, look. This 
is not the Hulk that uh, sorry not the not the Thor that we have. This is a this is not Thor. This is a whole different character. This is like this is a jock. Yeah. Where Thor is really this super confident, super I guess able person. Yeah. Where this Thor is like a goof almost. Well, yeah, like I, I can definitely see where you're getting from, but uh, like I guess that's just that's the direction they've tried to take him, uh, because obviously it wasn't working before. And uh, you'll find that there's a lot of people that are like, "This isn't Thor from the comics," and you know that sort of stuff. And like, this isn't the comics. You know what I mean? This is one of these things like where um, you kind of need to to let go. If you're a comic purist, then this movie is not going to be for you. At oh, all. not even comparing him to the comics. I'm comparing like because. It is. It's chalk and cheese when you compare it to the comics, but comparing this this Thor to say Thor of the Dark World, yeah, is completely different. Even Thor out of any of the Avengers movies yep. is completely different. But they done fucked up with Thor the Dark World. Yeah, well, they did. They did. Uh, not every. No one loved it. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but this character, like Thor's character, has like done a complete one eighty. Yeah, and like. Sure, Chris Hemsworth is like a funny guy, but is he a comedic actor strong enough to pull out a full-on comedic movie? Yes. You think so? Yeah, 100%. Okay. I I think Chris Hemsworth has pretty amazing comic timing. Yep. Um, I think that is witnessed with him being one of the, obviously in this movie in itself, but him being one of the strongest parts of the Ghostbusters reboot uh, as well. Um, He was hilarious in that movie. So I think he's got it there and like everybody that's worked with him has said, you know, Chris Hemsworth is hilarious and all that sort of stuff. I think they've just let Chris Hemsworth be Chris Hemsworth um, and just kind of, you know, it's like, let's kind of forget what we've done previously with this character and let's kind of, you know, what do you want to do? Who Like, let's kind of immerse yourself into it and kind of let your own, you know... Become uh, your own thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, and I can see that and I can respect that. But um, it's just so jarring. Like, if you're doing a bit of a movie marathon, you're watching Thor 1, Thor 2, Thor Raggers. No one's ever going to do that. Well, <laughs> you never know. But, I mean, this is the 17th movie into this universe. Yeah. And for him to be so different, is just that's just a little bit jarring. And, like, just, just the stuff that's going on, I mean, it's Ragnarok, mate. Yeah. It's not supposed to be... I can like I can understand it's going to be lighthearted, yeah, but like that is a little bit too lighthearted. Okay, well here here was my um, initial concern with the film when I, when I before I was going in with everything that I heard was like I thought it was going to be too funny in the in the sense of it was going to try to be funny all the time. Yeah. So no matter what the scenario or what the situation, it was always going to try to put a joke in there or do something. But there was some actual real kind of um like tough touching moments in this movie where i thought it was going to happen and they never did it and they let it play out the way it's supposed to play out so if there was an element of danger you still sensed an element of danger if there was like um a feeling of loss or you know something like that you still felt it um so i was actually are you sure yeah 100 percent for sure. So, like, as an example, uh, where, well, we, <laughs> there's stuff we can't talk about yet, but um, there are there are certain scenes where, you know, they really could have, like, played it up, and they didn't, uh, and I appreciate that, but then they threw the comedy into every other element, which I also, like, I didn't mind. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. But I do have to stress that, like, it's going to be one of those things that it can be quite, like... You can't go into this movie expecting to see a Thor movie because it is completely different. And it's completely different to anything that you've seen pretty much within the MCU as well, except for the similar kind of, you know, theme that it follows in the sense of having a weaker villain, even yeah. though I thought Kate Blanchett was um, quite good. She just wasn't really given a lot to do. Well, and that's the thing. Like, Kate Blanchett fucking played a super amazing Hela. Yep. But... They didn't write her to be amazing. Yeah. She was just... And I don't know, I can't really say too much now because we're probably going into spoiler territory, but she was almost like a... um, Like an obstacle rather than a villain. Yeah. Like, kind of get out of my way. I have to do this, this, and this. Yeah. 
Like I <laughs> never, I never saw her as like a huge immediate threat. We we can we can probably talk about it a bit more in spoilers, but I do I I, I disagree uh, in some instances. Yeah. Um, but we can talk about that a bit later. Um, action is amazing. Uh, when the action comes, it's not full of action. That, well, that's one of the downfalls of this movie. You know, you go in there, you kind of you're getting them like uh, you got Ragnarok going on. You kind of got this Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, semi story kind of weaved in there. Yeah, I would have expected more. Really, I would have expected a hun- like a fair bit more gladiator battles at least. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't see how it would have served the story anymore though. Uh, Do you know what I mean? I'll, like, I'll tell you in like in spoilers when we get to it because I have I have a right. pretty big point okay. that like no one's talking about. All right, all right. Well, let's let's go to spoilers then. Um, just give it your overall uh, rate it or hate it. I think I'm gonna have to hate it. Oh my god. Uh, I I rate and, this and movie. it's not not to say that I didn't enjoy the movie. I had a really fun time with it, but the I guess the the questions that it leaves me and the the issues that I have with it. Just kind of push it to that hate. Okay, well, let's see how we go because I do uh, <laughs> like wholeheartedly disagree. Uh, this to me is a definite rate, um, but we're going to move into spoiler territory. So give it like 10 seconds and we'll be talking about spoilery stuff from now. Now, uh, this first act of the movie was it was kind of too cram packed. For its for its own good, it kind of felt like it was a little bit of a roller coaster ride, you know. This is all within the first twenty minutes. Yeah, we got Thor fighting uh, Surtur. Yeah, uh, then he's back in Asgard. He's dethroned Loki, who is watching Matt Damon in a play. Amazing little cameo there. Yeah, um, we see Doctor Strange. Like a whole, there was a whole moment with Doctor Strange. It was actually one of the most awesome parts of this movie. Uh, we see Odin die. Hela arrives. Thor, uh, Thor and Loki are thrown out the Bifrost as they're cruising back to Asgard. Yeah. Uh, Hela arrives at Asgard and kills the Warrior Three instantly. She kills two of the three. Well, two instantly. of the three. Um, yeah. And that's all in the first 20 minutes of the film. Look, it's a lot, but that, like, you know, you're, you're playing, like, what do you want? Uh, I guess the, the other option to that is that you drag that out for, like, 45 minutes and then you're left with an hour and 15 to kind of wrap everything else up. Like, it's it's basically, like, the the pacing, there was absolutely no issue with the pacing for oh, me in the, the sense that it just went from was this fine. to this to this to this to this. We got to where we need to be. Now, let's figure out how we're going to get Thor back to Asgard uh, and battling Hela front on. The yep. only thing I will say is that, um, you know, I, I thought that it probably... There's there's quite a bit of Odin stuff that was yes. that was left on the cutting room floor. Um, I don't mind that because I could see Brisbane everywhere. <laughs> so it's quite frustrating that we, they're supposed to be in New York. There's but, a hotel that when we go to Brisbane, we sat at every time. And yep. that building was right across the road. Yep, pretty much. So it's very distracting to, to be, you know... When you're looking at it, and you're like, that is not even close to New York. That's yeah. like, you know, that's Dead Set Brisbane. You should have filmed in Melbourne. Melbourne at least kind of has some sort of feel that it could be similar to New York, maybe. Um, but Brisbane anyway. looks like it was about built about 20 years ago, so everything's very modern looking there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> that, that didn't quite work for me in, in that sense. Um, so I'm kind of like... I think that whole thing with with Odin was probably a little bit rushed. Yeah. Um, so there could have been more building to to that. They didn't really explain what was happening. They didn't really kind of. He just you know up and vanished essentially. Yeah. And that's fine. He became a force ghost. Yeah. And then we find out that uh, Hela is actually Thor and Loki's sister, um, and she has come back to claim the throne for herself. And uh, I, like again, I like I had no problems with with any of it. Uh, this that was the scene I was talking about yep. where where there's Loki and there's Thor and Odin, and that was one of the ones where I was kind of worried that it might have like stretched the 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 humor, yeah. Uh, like try to throw like just a little one liner or something in there, and they didn't, and they left it. Um, and and that might be one of the only moments in this movie where they really do that. No, not at all. You don't reckon? Yeah, hundred percent. There's not like in in, in most of the battles with with Hela. 
where she's you know where she kills the the warriors three or anything like that you've got scourge who was kind of like a comedic character right at the start like the first time you meet scourge and that's kind of the last time the guy really tries to be funny because yeah. for the most part he's actually struggling with everything that he's seeing that's Absolutely. happening to his people so there's another sense of like you actually get to see that develop in that character and he's not just being like he's not just there as a comedic sort of sidekick uh, he actually has his own little story as well and that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get to. Like there was actual, you know, there there were stakes for people in this movie. See, I was almost under the impression that like while the stakes, like I mean, it's Ragnarok, you know, Asgard is going to die. Yep. I still felt like the stakes weren't high. Really? Yeah. And I, it that really comes down to, to Halla being the letdown for me. Uh, like I said, I felt she has the Marvel curse. Of just being a weak villain, um, so weak, weak how though? Well, because she she went to Asgard and she laid waste to everything. Well, she, she did lay brutally killed two characters that have been in two uh, two of the other movies in an instant, and then killed the third later, and only didn't kill Lady Sif because of contractual issues <laughs> with Jamie Alexander, so she couldn't actually appear in the movie. Yeah, look, um, I just felt like she, Hella was a fantastic character. She just wasn't written in the most optimal way. I mean, I felt like her her goal to rule the, all the realms was almost like a little shit in the sense that she was kind of, I guess, banished for 500,000 years. Yeah. And then her plan is to come back and just take over these realms. Like, Which... I feel like the whole story could have been vastly better if they had her teaming up with Serta to say like how she gets her power from Asgard or something like that it would be great if they wrote her in the way that like she gets her power from the deaths of As- Asgardians yeah but the whole point of Serta was the it was his um, it was his job <laughs> or goal or whatever to bring about the destruction of Asgard. I know, but I think it could have been written in the way that um, Serta and Hela could have worked together. Yeah, how? Well, if she if she is claiming Asgard as her own, and Serta's one purpose is to destroy Asgard, how? Well, what I'm saying is that if she had her power, because the way she got her power was like she just hung around home and got stronger. I can make spikes come out of anywhere now, bitches. Yeah, uh, it would have been better if she got more powerful. When she killed as guardians, so like say she great she got great power when she killed say Thor or Loki or something like that, like she would have just become immensely stronger if she teamed up with Serta, destroyed all of Asgard, and I guess got all that collective energy put into her. She could have teamed up later on as you know Lady Death for Thanos. Yeah, but the whole point though is that. She was just trying to Daenerys Targaryen this shit, man. She just wanted people to bend the knee. She yeah, didn't want to kill them. Like, uh, that's not the point. They're like actually her people. Yeah. She wanted to be worshipped. One of her first things is like, have you forgotten who I am? Like, you know, she wanted them to worship her as their leader. It wouldn't make sense for her to then go and kill everybody. Yeah, but I don't think it worked well for her story. Like, it just makes her an obstacle rather than... An actual villain. Okay. We'll agree to disagree. Yeah, no, that's sure. fair. Um, well, then, me, if I could put it maybe <laughs> a bit of a more uh, positive spin on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I cannot... Uh, like, uh, the, the character like interactions with everybody uh, I thought were pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so, in particular, like, a massive standout to Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie. Um, who is one of the best things I've seen in some time. Yep. Uh, and I would 100% support and um, go into bat for a solo movie or a team-up. You know how she was pushing for a um, a team-up female hero movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I'd be all for that. I think the action in this movie was fantastic. That opening scene with Serto that you're talking about? Yep. Absolutely incredible. Um, Great comedic timing. In that as well. Yeah, but not even talking about the comedy or anything. Like, just the action in itself um, was, you know... Like, it's kind of like they've realized... I don't, I don't know how, how long ago Thor 1 was. But it's like in the time that it's... It's, it's like... 
look how much we can actually do with CGI. <laughs> Let's make this look like the coolest shit people have ever seen. He's yeah. Spin his hammer. He's going to do this and that. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. That opening scene, I was a little bit worried when they first started that I'm like, okay, this, this comedy isn't necessarily hitting. Um, and I was like, you know, with the chains as, it, as it's kind of spinning around. around. And it's like, okay, is this how they're going to play the movie? Like every single thing is going to be a joke. And that's what I was worried about initially. Yeah. But to me, I know it's different for you, but to me, they didn't do that at all. And that's fine. Um, but once we got past that and the action kicked off, it was absolutely incredible. I loved it. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, can I talk to you about a few things that I have like some mixed emotions on? No, oh, well, yeah, if you already are. So. <laughs> Well, I'm going, I'm going a little bit deeper because, like, these are the things that I don't think people are, like, talking too much about. Okay. So, one of them is, like, that Valkyrie is, like, an alcoholic with um, PTSD. Yeah. Like, that's not really touched on too much in the movie. And, like, some people are actually talking about that outside and how she's also bisexual. I don't think that needs to be in the movie because it's not really going to advance her character arc in this movie. Yeah. Later on, like, if she has, a say, a spinoff with... Um, a whole bunch of other female leaders that could be fantastic. Yeah. Um, Loki is like essentially murdered Odin in the sense like yeah. he sent him to his death and it's kind of like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like he's kind of welcomed back to Asgard because he came back and fought for him. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was necessarily as easy as that. I think, um, like I, I agree the Loki story was probably the weakest of the lot, in my opinion, um, simply because it's kind of like, you know, at one point in time, Loki was deemed to be the most dangerous threat to Earth. Yes. And Doctor Strange references it at the start as well. And then it's kind of very much, yeah, it's like, is he though? Like, he kind of gets his ass kicked all the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is like, when you think about it, if he really is that dangerous, why, you know, if they don't, they don't build him like that. Yeah. And in this movie in particular, uh, he isn't portrayed like that at all. Um, so that and the fact that, yes, it is kind of like seemingly a little bit of a an easy forgive by Thor to Loki after everything that they've been through and Loki's basic hand in the death of Odin for him to kind of go, yeah, you know, we're kind of cool. Yeah. I understand, though, that they are brothers. Well, you know they what I are... Mean? And they are the two you know, like leaders of Asgard and they are the ones that are responsible now for the, the safety of their people. But in so, saying that, he was also ready to let him just be on Sakaar forever. Yeah, but was he though? You know, was he ever really going to do that? Or is that just Loki being Loki? You know what I mean? It's like that. that is one kind of arc that they tried to give him and it's kind of almost the Loki redemption story. Uh, I just don't think it played out too well. Mm. That was probably my only real issue with the movie, though. Okay. No, that's fair. Yep. Okay. Now, this one, I know people aren't talking about this. Yeah. But this is a fucking major issue. Okay. Hulk is a murdering death machine. Yeah. Like, how many people has he killed on Sakaar in battle? Probably heaps. It's probably. a battle planet. It is a battle planet. But how is Bruce going to deal with it? Well... He doesn't know, for starters. Well, he doesn't know, but he should know. And this is one of the things that I think they miss the boat on in this movie. Is like That could have been like an internal struggle with Bruce Banner never wanting to become the Hulk again. Well, they kind of say that in this movie because if he becomes the Hulk again, he says he'll never be back. Yeah. But I kind of feel like this could have been a really great internal struggle for Bruce Banner to never want to be the Hulk again because he is essentially a badass murderer. But he knows who he is, like as the Hulk. He understands what he what he is capable of and that's why he doesn't want to turn into the Hulk because he knows that it's going to be incredibly hard to, you know, calm the beast, mm. as it were. And the angrier it gets, the crazier it gets, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera the more damage and destruction and whatnot. So, but there is a part where he says that, yes, exactly what you said. Like, if I do this again, I don't know if I'll ever come back. And he still makes that sacrifice. Well, here's the thing. When he jumps out of that spaceship and hits that ground, did he die? Did Bruce Banner die? Uh, I am under the impression that the Hulk will not let Bruce Banner die. You think? Yeah. 
Hmm. So he looked pretty dead. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and like, it'll be interesting to see like if the Hulk has the ability to like prevent Bruce's death. Yeah. So I genuinely think he does. I I, I would think he probably does too. I mean, we've seen line. Well, we've heard lines alluded to in previous um, Hulk movies. You know, where he's tried to shoot himself in the head and the the big guy spat it out. Yeah. Uh, spat it out, and I mean the bullet. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be genuinely interested to see if we ever get Bruce back. Yeah, we will. Hundred percent. You reckon? Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, to me, not an issue. Not an issue. Like, it, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, like I, I think they could have done more with his, you know, with his kind of like his eventual. They like. While, yes, he was there and he made the decision and he knew that if he turned into the Hulk again, he may never come back. He kind of only... They, it, it's almost like they only really did it so he could fight the big wolf. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, you know, it's not like he saved everybody from everything and stuff yeah. like that. I thought it was absolutely hilarious where, you know, they're trying to leave Surtur alone to do his thing and the Hulk <laughs> just jumps in and starts, like, trying to fight him. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Like, it, it probably... It could have been a little bit more in it to, yeah. to you know a bit a bit more of an internal struggle but again like to me it, it didn't matter yeah, right. this movie is not designed to be dark and depressing and you know it doesn't all have of that to, sort yeah. of stuff and the, the, not everything has to be like you know black and gritty and gray and dull and you know sad and you know harrowing <laughs> and etc 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 sometimes it can just be fun well, and it, it can, can be, be light while still having you know some themes that you know like dealing with death and loss and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, each to their own, really. I think you're trying to look too deep into it, my friend. Oh, uh, may, maybe. You know, I did have high hopes for this movie, and I think I just wanted a little bit more out of it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very shallow in the way that it, it kind of operates, and not that that it's a bad thing because the movie was lots and lots of fun. Yeah. Um, I just probably just wanted to go, you know, down into the deep end of the pool and not in the shallows. Right. Um, sometimes, and I, I think when you know, for the most part. Uh, this will probably get me some shit, but for the most part, when dealing with comic book movies, I think you got to live in the shallows. Yeah, I think you do. You know what I mean? Oh, and that's, uh, and that's where it's fun, especially you know, like with the with the Marvel formula and the way that they're doing things. It's not necessarily designed to invoke deep thought. I don't go into these movies hoping that I come out a changed man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I go into these movies hoping that I'm entertained, and for this, I was entertained solidly for you know two hours and 15 minutes or however long it was yeah that's that's fair but let me ask you this would you want your infinity war movies to be this tone the infinity war movies won't be this tone but i'm asking would you want them to be like this no but i think that that's different yeah like that that's a different sort of thing you're dealing with like there has to be high high stakes and at the end of the day in in this particular like in this particular movie in thor 3 the stakes were as high as the destruction of Asgard, which doesn't really affect anybody else other than Asgardians. Yeah. So while the stakes are high, it's only high for them. Yeah. Right? Whereas in something like Infinity War, the stakes are high for everybody because this is a potentially universe-destructing kind of thing. So that's yeah. why we're getting Guardians and we're getting all these people coming together because of the the universal threat that it is. So I think in that type of thing, yeah, it has to be. Like the stakes have to be higher and there has to be actual, you know, lives on the line and consequences yep. for, you know, for this. Otherwise, yeah, you're just, you're dealing with the same thing. All right, Troy. What did you think of the Grandmaster? <sighs> so Jeff Goldblum. Uh, Jeff Goldblum was Jeff Goldblum, um, but Jeff Goldblum was hilarious. He fucking, st he stole this movie for me. He was amazing. Anytime he was on on the camera, he was just absolute gold. Yeah. Kind of like, why are you pointing the death stick at them? <laughs> he just spoke over me. That's not worth dying for. Yeah. I think if it wasn't for um, Korg, uh, then yeah, Grandmaster might have been up there. But for yeah. me, a Korg and Valkyrie were the two uh, the Piss two showstoppers. <laughs> <laughs> we were like we were out last night, uh, and you know. We were we were celebrating a birthday and we had a few drinks. Had a lot of drinks. We had a lot of drinks and uh, yeah, the um, the Korg references did not stop. Oh, amazing! Uh, and you know, being an Australian and being kind of like a little bit more surrounded by that, I guess um, there is uh, like it's just uh, oh man, it's hilarious. Taika Waititi in that role, 
absolutely <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> I thought it was fucking like there. There was some genuine laugh out loud moments. Yeah. Um, where both myself and my partner were like pissing ourselves because it's just you know it's like I don't <laughs> like I don't want to try to do the accent because I don't want to like do I don't it. want to try to butcher it. But it's like you know it's like oh yeah I st- I tried to start a revolution but uh, <laughs> I didn't print out enough pamphlets so nobody came. And it's like, Just what are you talking about? It kills but me, it's man. it's fucking hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. That was, to me, that was uh, that was amazing. Uh, Valkyrie was amazing. Um, I look, you know, without going, you know, sort of like back and forth in between like what we liked and what we didn't like and all that sort of stuff. For me, there, there wasn't much in it that I didn't enjoy. Uh, if I wasn't so busy this week, I 100% would have gone back and watched it a second time. Uh, I would not have hesitated uh, about seeing it for a second time. I don't think it's it's probably one of the funniest things I've seen uh, in in quite some time. And I will, I will agree with you 100%. And like, I'm going to have the most torn, I guess, opinion on this movie because one, I don't rate it. But two, I would go back and watch it. Yeah, which is bizarre. It you is have, very bizarre. You have rated some shit this year, my friend. I have, but <laughs> it's, I guess my my expectations were set to 11 yeah which is which is surprising like I, I don't understand why they would be set so high after such a like thor one was it was good yeah um thor two was not yeah so where do these <laughs> uber high expectations come from because mine were set high because i'm a fan of the director yeah um i loved everything that i'd seen so far i thought that like the coloring was amazing i loved the the world of sakar that they had built um, I was very excited to see Tessa Thompson because I loved her in Creed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there were many, many, many things that actually built it for me. And to me, it lived up to my expectations. Yeah. Um, so what, what actually built it so high for you then? Oh, I think it might. it's just an internal thing. I was like, I had a feeling this might have been one of the movies of the year, uh, which it, it's going to be just for not the reasons I wanted it to be. Right. So take that as you will. Okay. Fair uh, enough. Let's finish it real quick on Hulk. What'd oh. you think of him? Yeah, great. Uh, I thought, like, even... Um, What'd got, you think of Braddy Hulk? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> like, again, genuinely some some laugh out loud moments with the Hulk as well. Um, you know, and when he's getting Braddy, it's exactly that. He's acting kind of like a two-year-old yeah. that could destroy planets if he wanted to. Yep. Um, kicking shields and, like, you know, just being like a general little shit, like a two-year-old shit. Um, I like. I thought that it was amazing. Um, in the sense of, like, I didn't think they would be able to get that comedy out of, um, like, out of that, out of type, yeah, that type of character, out of that type of character. Uh, but they did, uh, and I thought that was, um, I thought that was great. And the Revengers as a team, uh, I thought, I thought worked really well together. The the four of them together worked, yep. played off each other really well. What about you? Oh, mate, I, I thought he was hilarious. I uh, loved it. Um, almost got some Hulk dick action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, um, you know, it's always funny. Everyone's wondered. Yeah. Everyone's thought about it. Yeah. So um, I think that kind of was like a little wink to everyone. Yeah. So that was um, that was quite hilarious. But um, just, just a great, great new spin on that character. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, like there are a lot of people on the internet that are saying, you know, like the Hulk is kind of, it, if I was to say it like in my way, it suffers, he suffers the CW curse in the sense of his power set is very much dependent on who he's around yes. and what's happening at any given time. Um, so he is very kind of, you know, it's it's very up and down. It's inconsistent power levels. Um, and, that, and that's a bit of an injustice to the character. Um, but uh, I don't care. Like the again, Hulk, the Hulk the is like mindless fun, really. Yeah. Look, I love as anyone who has listened to the show before, and if you're just joining us, how are you going? I love comic books. I like. I do. I genuinely do. <laughs> I try to read them as much as I possibly can. Um, but like, I don't have to. Like, my movies don't have to be ripped straight out of the pages. Sometimes I love it when they pay homage to the comic books. Yeah. Um, but you don't need Zach to see Snyder that. Snyder does that really well. Um, but I don't need to necessarily like every storyline doesn't have to mirror 
the comic book. It doesn't have to be. You can take creative license. And I would much rather see a director like Taika Waititi uh, and directors like Ryan Coogler and all these young, you know, James Gunn's, young visionary yeah. directors getting their chance to shine and put their own spin on it and giving me something new and fresh and entertaining than seeing the same thing that I've already seen like a like a, a hundred times before or I've read in the comics or something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... You know, like there are a lot of people that are complaining that it's, you know, it, that it's that it's too much of a stretch. But to me, like, that's fine. It doesn't it's, have to be. It's a movie. Yeah. You know it's a movie, I mean? man. It's a movie. It's two hours of pure blistering entertainment, in my opinion. Lots of laughs. 100% rate it. Cade, not so much. But still go see it. <laughs> Which makes no sense. It's like, hey, this, hey. Is, this is, you have now somehow managed to taint a system where we have made it as simple <laughs> as either you like it or you don't, and you have somehow managed to find a way to fuck that up. Yes or no? So, there you go. What can you say? I've Ragnarok'd. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely not say that. Uh, now, the only other thing I really want to talk about before we wrap this up completely, two end credit scenes, so do stick around. Uh, there is one mid-credits and one right at the very end. Uh, probably don't need to stick around to the very end one. I am doing you a service. Um, but if you're at this point... You've seen it. spoilers, you've seen it. Um, yeah, so mid credit scene leads us into Avengers Infinity War. That's a big fuck-off Thanos ship. Easy. Um, so this is somehow going to lead us into how uh, Thor is like lost in space. Yeah. And comes so, across the Guardians. Um, I have a couple of things here. Yeah. Loki... Obviously took the Tesseract. Oh, yes. We did not mention that, but he obviously did. He obviously did. I think he summoned Thanos. Yeah. And do you think all the Asgardians are going to get killed and the race is gone? Ooh, maybe. Do you think Marvel are that ballsy? Well, oh, man, that'd be tough because basically what you're going to go into is like you're going to kind of have that so the ship gets destroyed. Yeah. But we know some of those people are coming back. So it's kind of like... Is that how it would play out? Because we know they have plans for more Korg, which is amazing. Yeah. Korg and Miek, the little duo. Um, oh, I, ste- <laughs> I stepped on him. Uh, <laughs> I just felt so bad. I've been carrying him around. <laughs> oh, he's alive. Uh, uh, what was the question again, bro? Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? So I don't know how they would actually play out, play that out. Yep. Um, but uh, time, time will tell Troy. Time will tell Next year will tell And then the end credit scene Obviously is Nothing too much It's just a little bit more Of Jeff Goldblum Being a Comedian Because he's funny That's all I got Well Troy That's going to take us To our listener questions We uh, We teased the idea earlier In the episode That we're going to do this We did And uh, the time has come The time has come It's returned uh, very triumphantly. Yes. And there's, um, there's, there would be trumpets, but I asked for uh, spooky ghost noises last week and I got fuck all. So there's definitely not going to be trumpets. If you listened really hard, you could hear me telling you to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's the first question? Okay. So uh, these are questions from our listener community. So if you want to join in on this action, head over to facebook.com and search for Comic Confidential Listener Community and you can get on this sweet, sweet Listen to question, action. All you have to do, answer a simple question. What is the name of our podcast? It's Comic Confidential Podcast. I've given you the answer. Now get in there and get wow, into it. Wow, spoilers. Yep. So uh, the first one is from Shane Gibson, and he goes, do you think comic movies should start paying more attention to standalone films or try and make a bigger universe? Now, before you answer, Peter Bauer has attached a question to this, Ooh, saying alternatively... Double questions. Yeah, double, double. So alternatively, do you think comic book movies should be becoming more standalone without so much uh, reliance on creating a highly integrated universe. So it's yeah. kind of like, what do you want? More standalones or more mix and match? Yeah, so uh, for me, look, I think there needs to be a good balance between both. Like, I, I, I enjoy the shared universe aspect. Yep. Um, I don't think it always works. Uh, but I think, like, I, I do enjoy 
the fact that you get to have characters popping in and popping out and they can interact with each other and characters that you might not see interact with other characters and things like that you know this is how we're getting something like avengers infinity war by having this universe and having these characters kind of being able to come together like the guardians of the galaxy going to team up with the avengers and it's going to be amazing and everyone's going to love it um but i do think that there should be a like when you're doing your standalone movies why not like there's no reason why you couldn't do some that don't necessarily lead into the events of other said movies if yeah. that makes sense yeah absolutely so like just throwing it out there as an example like if they made a moon knight movie and that had nothing to do with um anything that was actually happening right now i'd still fucking dig that yeah do you know what i mean yeah so, absolutely but then the other option is that you leave your tv universe for um for the standalone kind of not related stuff mm-hmm. and then you keep your movie universe for the shared aspect. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? Yeah, look, I think if you can focus on a really strong, I guess, solo movie, you can always integrate that later on because there's no reason why you can't say, oh, hey, by the way, this is in the same universe. In the next movie, we're going to get them to do this, this and this. Um, so it kind of works both ways. Yeah, I wouldn't be disappointed if my universe has never kind of crossed over. Um, but if they did, I guess that's just like extra bonus points for me. Yeah. Uh, I've got another question here. This is from Sean Snow. If, you'd, if you were to get a villain in the lead role of a film or TV show, who would it be and why? Ooh. Now, this is something that we've been wanting for a long time is a villain-led, I guess, movie slash TV series. Yeah. Um. Who would I have? I would love a reverse Flash movie. Yeah, okay. I would love to see that happen. I dig that. Mm. Um, or a Doctor Doom. Yeah. Yeah. That's how the Fantastic Four can be done, right? Is from a villain perspective. Yeah, I think a Doctor Doom standalone movie would be amazing. Yeah. Um, so I'm all for that. Uh, I'm going to throw just a random one out there. What about a... Taskmaster. There you go. That'll wow. Do. <laughs> Just a random one that came to my head. Very that'd much That would be so. pretty fun. It would be. He's got some cool powers. He has. Uh, okay, we'll take one more. And this is from Chris Sutherland. What's the most overhyped movie that you have seen this year? Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, for me, just having, uh, just having another little think about it. Power Rangers. Power still, Rangers? For sure. Yep. That's fair. Yeah, look, that was... You hyped it. Amy hyped it. Everybody fucking seemed to love it. I thought it was pretty shit. That's fair enough. Very man. average. That's fair. Uh, what about you? Uh, mine, I'm going to slip into the horror realm, and that would be Mother. Everyone said it was great. I watched it. Fucking hated it. Probably <laughs> the most hated movie I've watched in a long time. So um, that answers that question. Yeah. Darren Aronofsky... Go fuck yourself. Yes, indeed. From Kate. Go black swan your fucking self. (laughs) Whatever that means. So, that takes us to the end of the show, Troy. Yes, it does. As it always does. The end part. The end part. (laughs) Inevitably comes around. Uh, What are we doing next week? Next week, I do believe we are doing a crossover podcast episode. Oh my God. So, if you... Can you announce who that is with yet or not? Okay. It is with the Four Finger Discount, the Australian Simpsons podcast, which is absolutely amazing. If you don't listen to it, go check them out. Mitch and Dando do a pretty good show over there. So we might have to just raise our um, our skill level by 10 to mm. just maybe be on their level. Nah, I'm just going to wing it like I always do. Yeah, nice. I like that. I'm just going to come in and just cash it up and I'm just going to be like, all right, boys, let's do it. Fan. And then if it works, it works. If not, we can delete it and pretend it never happened. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's next week. Uh, and then after that, it's Justice League. Justice League, baby. I am so pumped. Yes. So, so pumped. Yeah, and I said earlier that Justice League comes out next week, which is actually... No, it is. It. I was right. I, th- I just started second-guessing myself. But it's not this Thursday, it's next Thursday. Is it really? Yes. And so we're going to bring you our review straight away. Yes. Uh, so get out and see Justice League straight away because um, this guy is going somewhere. Where are you going again? Vanuatu. Vanuatu. Uh, so 
he needs to be here for this one because it's quite a big one. Yeah, it's the uh, the movie of the year. Yeah, it could be. Could potentially be the movie of the year. Uh, uh, how nervous are you feeling that um, Thor Ragnarok did not knock off uh, Logan for you for movie of the year? Or did it? Did it? No. Damn. Uh, but I would... Look, this is... You know, it's something I didn't mention in the in the review because you really threw me. I thought you'd like this movie, but you didn't. Uh, or did you? No one I, knows. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I Genuinely, did. no one I knows. love the movie, but I didn't rate it. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, uh, um, <laughs> I would put Thor Ragnarok in, in my top three movies of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're a crazy son I'm of a bitch. I'm just going to leave that there. Let it boing, blip. It's on the wall. It's stuck. Wow. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately... Or fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> Yet to figure it out. Uh, did not knock Logan off. Um, look, to be honest with you, there's still Justice League. There's still Star Wars. Um, I uh, probably I'm pretty You're sweating bullets. Pretty mate. confident that uh, Star Wars will take it. You sure? But at the end of the day, it's just a tattoo, isn't it? Really, it's just on me for life. Yeah. What's that matter? What's your partner said about this? Have you told no, her? I haven't told her. Don't be silly. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> yep. She'll go away for a weekend or something and she'll come back and I'll have some <laughs> dirty fucking Wolverine tattoo. Amazing. Um, that's it. Let's thank some people. Let's <laughs> thank the listeners, subscribers and reviewers. Uh, 100 by 100, guys. Let's get there. Got a couple more this week. So yes. we're slowly getting there. Slowly, slowly. Um, and we'll take your three-star reviews. Oh, man, you are salty. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I genuinely, here's my thing with reviews, you guys. I, you can give me a five star. You can give me a one star. I don't mad. Like, I don't mind. <laughs> I ain't mad. I just want to know what you think. So if you are going to leave a three star review, tell us why. Same as if you're going to leave a five star or a one star. You just got to tell us why. That way we can grow. Y- and that way we can, you know. You're letting them win. <laughs> I don't mind. I genuinely like. I genuinely don't have a problem with it. I would just like to know uh, what you think we can work on. Look, I would like to thank the person for the three star review because it's caused such great entertainment for me. Oh my god! <laughs> All I am saying is that just give me some words that I can read, so you know we know what you're thinking. You know, oh, I love it. I love it. Anyway. Um, look, if you want to find the show, you can find that on Facebook where just search Comic Confidential Podcast. You can also find our listener group. Uh, as I said earlier, that's the Comic Confidential listener community. We're also on Instagram and Twitter. That's at Comic Con Pod. And we also have a website that's Comic Con Pod.com. Past episodes, future episodes, and everything in between. And if you want to take the extra mile and help the show out financially you can do that too by supporting us on patreon that's patreon.com forward slash comic con pod and you can just help us out by throwing in one dollar a month one dollar you do it's pretty good and we appreciate it yeah. it's not a lot but it means everything to us it helps <laughs> uh keep the lights on and keeps the show going Oh my god, it's like a telethon. It's like you're trying to raise money for like starving children in Africa. You can help look feed. at it. You we can are not starving. Hey. <laughs> children in Africa could listen to this podcast. They, for they might one, look at it. I do month. apologize. Um uh that is it. That's it. We're done, baby. Isn't it? We're done. Uh we'll be back next week, same time, same uh, iTunes thing. Just look us up. <laughs> You're now in it. Uh, my name is Troy. I got that right. Yeah, my name's Cage. Uh, this has been Comic Confidential. Cheers. Peace. Fucking nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, Man, I'm, I reckon people's heads are exploding. They're like, does he like it or doesn't he? My head is exploding. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I genuinely still don't know <laughs> what you think about Thor Ragnarok. It's good, man. You should go see it. <laughs> but it's shit. Yeah, but I don't rate it. <laughs> Do you know how fucking infuriating that is to me? I was like, we created a system to simplify it. Hey. And you've now found... <laughs> now we've just got to... Like, now we can't even rate things anymore. Yeah. We, we don't even... It's not even a review. It's just thoughts. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't think people go out to like, oh, well, Cade said he rated this. I'm definitely going to go see it. Oh, I think you underestimate no. how angry we can make people. <laughs> At Comic Con Pod, fight me. Piss off, ghost. Piss off, ghost. It's one of those funny rooms. <laughs> it's like a, a normal room, but you teleport. <laughs> See you later, new Doug. 
If you love this podcast, then head over to ComicConPod.com to check out the other incredible shows on our network. You can also support us on Patreon from as little as $1 a month. You'll get early access to all our shows, plus secret supporter content that's not available to the public. Head over to Patreon.com forward slash ComicConPod to find out more.